We are defined by the choices we make in life. When we are children, these choices are made by others, mainly our parents. But as we get older, we start to define our own way by making our own life's choices. In the next few minutes, I want to share with you my life's choices and how those choices first brought me to the void and then helped me escape it. The military junta, the dictatorship, took control of Greece just a few days after I was born. And a couple years later, my parents made a significant choice, a huge choice, to leave Athens, Greece for Boston, Massachusetts, a choice for a better life in America. Back then, it was easier. It just took a little bit less than three months to immigrate. Those first years in the U.S. were tough for us. My father worked three jobs, including as a gas station attendant in one of Boston's roughest neighborhoods. I remember the stories he would come home and tell us about the strange Americani and he met during his time working at the gas station. Those all-night shifts he worked there, those first few years in the U.S., or a couple of times he would come and he told us the stories about how he got robbed at gunpoint a few times. That and barely speaking English. We were not rich, but the choice was work hard, do your part, and live within your means. Work hard, whether you're pumping gas taking care of the home and the children, or taking care of your grades at school. The choice to work hard is an important one, which we really followed those years in the United States. When I was in the sixth grade, <clears throat> I remember an encyclopedia salesman coming to our home, trying to sell us the Encyclopedia Britannica. Now, you have to understand that our family valued and continues to value education above all else. My parents had come to the U.S. in part for educating us kids. So that night, with this Encyclopedia Britannica salesman in our living room, I saw something in my parents' eyes as he was talking to them and I was translating from English to Greek for them. They really wanted to buy that brand new English language encyclopedia set. They wanted to buy it for me and my sisters because it was a great learning tool. But they could not. They couldn't buy it. It was way too expensive for them. I saw the sadness in their eyes knowing that this was a great tool for us kids, but one they simply could not afford even though the value they placed on education for their kids, they just couldn't do it. That moment, I really, really understood the sacrifice, the choices my parents had made for their children. So, we never bought that Encyclopedia Britannica. Instead, we bought the Encyclopedia Columbia, volume by volume, each week, from the local Stop and Shop supermarket. And you know what? We made it work. And we still have that Encyclopedia Columbia back in Boston. Within a short period of time, a few years, we became the product of the American dream, upper middle class. My parents paid for our education, all three of us, me and my sisters, and they did it without any debt. They always told my two sisters and me, just do well in school, work hard, don't give up, and don't have to worry about anything else. Just do well and work hard in school. The end result was my choice to study engineering and begin a professional career with one of the largest industrial companies in the world. A company which at one point had over a million employees in over 45 different countries all over the world. 
As I started my career, I worked hard once again. I made the effort and it paid off. I had my share of fancy titles over my career. Department manager, general manager, director, senior director, vice president. All that stuff that many of us so strongly desire. I did it. My financial situation enabled me to live well and to start giving back to my parents for the years of chosen sacrifice they made for their children. Over a career trajectory that spanned almost 25 years, some would say I became rich. Um, I had three cars at any given time, nice ones, including a company car. I collected watches that totaled almost $100,000 in value put together. Nice corporate $1,000 dinners for three people or so. Going into restaurants and greeting different local business people in the community, them knowing me, me knowing them, the owner knowing me. It was nice. I felt like a big shot, important status. Flying business class was really nice too, especially on those long trips to Europe and Japan. How all this developed? Again, through hard work, strong support and encouragement from my family, and a little bit of luck, but mostly hard work. I am a true believer that through hard work, you can achieve anything, virtually anything you want money, status, success. So here I was, a rich corporate executive, but over a period of time that spent about eight years or so, I began to see my own personal void start to form and engulf me. How? Well, I was working no less than 12 hours every day. Every day, weekdays, weekends for at least 10 years. I was lucky to get four hours of sleep a night. At this point, some of my students will be nodding and saying, well, professor, now you know how we feel. My marriage failed in just three years because I didn't make enough of an effort and focus was elsewhere and not in the marriage. My health began to seriously deteriorate I was having chest pains and I realized it was only a matter of time. And at that point, I was in the void already. Was this how I wanted my life to be? I had no choice, right? This is what I worked for. But really, was the choice there? Of course it was. And I had to make a different choice. So I decided to change the entire trajectory of my life. I quit my job. I came to Bulgaria to teach. That life choice still defines me today after five years of being here at the American University of Bulgaria, AUBG. Why Bulgaria? Why AUBG? It was a good combination. Similar cultural background small, relatively quiet town in which I can devote my time teaching and to my students, a simpler, more focused life than say a big city. There would be few distractions. It just felt right at the right time. But had I actually escaped my own personal void? Well, let's see. AUBG was the first full-time teaching job that I ever had. And I took it very, very seriously, as my students would know. So I immersed myself in my responsibilities. I stayed busy and focused on teaching, mainly international business and strategic management, negotiation, strategy, a very appropriate course given the circumstances of me and my choices. Also, I began to appreciate the simpler but more rewarding things in life while here at AUBG and the Blagoevgrad in Bulgaria. Yes, 
I felt lucky to have managed to actually break free of my void, I felt. I have done it. But the thing is, I didn't do it alone. Not alone. I had hundreds and hundreds of helpers, and those helpers were my students. My students showed me what it meant to have ideals, dreams, to strive, but also to have fun in life. I would be lying to you if I told you they made me feel young again, like how I was when I was their age. That would not be true. Because at their age, I was far too serious and already high strung to begin with. I never sang, I never danced, I would have never ever done this talk like this now to you as we are doing right now. I would have thought, ah, it's not, what's the point? It's not really important. I did not know how to have a good time even in my youth. I did not see myself in them, in my students. I saw them as better. They were not a reflection of a younger me. They were better. Yeah, better. But what happens when these great young people leave and go out in the so-called real world? Would they make the same choices I made? And if so, how would it affect their own lives? In a similar way to mine? Would they slowly enter their own personal void? Would they get caught up in the nonstop world where it's all about money and status? So in teaching strategy, yes, it's a business course, of course, but the tools we use can also be applied to one's own person, one's own personal development, the individual, not just companies and business, but the individual. And this is what we try to do in our classes as well. Strategy is all about making choices so as to shape our future. Whether it is our company, ourselves, fundamentally, this is the definition of strategy, choice. So I address my students, you, what will be your choices? What significant impact will you make in the world? Are your choices going to be inward, selfish, singular, or outward, considerate, generous, and collective? Who are you? What are you all about? How will you make your choices actually work? These are questions. These are questions to consider carefully. These sort of fundamental questions to ask, but embedded in all these is another more subtle question. How do you truly define and measure success? The way I define success today has absolutely no relation to the way I defined and measured success less than six years ago. Six years ago, this is how I used to think of success. Today, this is how I think of success. You. Your success has become my success. My student's success is my success. My reward is not this anymore. If it was, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I wouldn't be here in Bulgaria teaching at a liberal arts university and enjoying every single minute of it. The most valuable reward I can get today comes down to three simple words. Not this but three simple words. Thank you, professor. That's it. 
In my previous career, I worked with multi-million dollar machines, designing them, manufacturing them, putting them to use with different international customers all around the world. It was interesting. But today, I work with people, young people, and I'm trying to positively influence their thinking a little bit, trying to do my part. And these young people are the most valuable, the most precious resource on our planet. Not machines, not money, not anything else. But the young people are the most valuable, most precious resource in our planet. Their education is one of the most valuable endeavors one can undertake. Being a teacher, an educator, a mentor, someone who already has gone through it, this is what satisfaction is. This is how I measure my success through you. It's been sad over the past year with what is happening worldwide with the pandemic because we had to skip the last graduation here at AUBG. Generally, I never miss a graduation. I love graduations. I enjoy graduations when I graduated, but I enjoy graduations even more when I see you graduate. I truly, it truly warms my heart to see these young people, my students, happy to be finishing their studies. Still a bit cautious about what comes next, but more prepared now, more prepared for what's coming up. And also, I see their parents and how proud and happy they are for their children. Just like my parents were proud of us, my sisters and I, at our graduation. But now, they're no longer children, but ready to take control of their lives and make their own choices. Choices that will de ultimately define them as individuals beyond the void. 